Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. I especially appreciate that due to the fact that you are, uh, after two days uh, full of uh, other talks, presentations, a lot of knowledge, and also probably after good uh, good evening yesterday, and also uh, I think that you will repeat this to tomorrow uh, and today. But uh, okay, never mind. Thank you very much. We during this very quick lightning session, we will talk about how to replace. Uh, good old well-known Java enums with something a little bit better, which is the are the seed classes in Java. And we will try to see why this, uh, this enums should be replaced, why there is a lot of um, troubles with them, and we will see how can we use it with the modern Java features, because the seed classes will not only be the one thing I would be talking about, but also will cover another few topics. Okay, just for the technical reasons, there should be one slide <laughs> describing who I am. So my name is Marcin Krost. I'm a uh, freelancer, IT trainer, consultant. I usually work mostly for two companies performing trainings, there are Sages and Bottega IT Minds. If you are interested with contacting me, dropping me an email, or you are w wanting to see my GitHub, which also the code replace, uh, uh, presented during this talk will be placed, just v please visit my website. There are a the lot of links presented there, and also there will be a link at the end of the talk. Okay, not to waste the time because we are two minutes uh, after start. Let's go to the description of the problem, because usually every piece of the code which is being presented such, uh, during such conference needs to represent the real business problem, and in our case, it's a very simple, simplified model of the long engine, because as you can see, the, the flow is like such that the loan requester comes to the bank and she says, okay, I want to get a loan, uh, with the for, for a given amount of money for a given period of time. And our evaluator, our automated system, thinks about it, uh, takes into consideration some business rules, and gives one of three possible outcomes. Either the loan can be approved, and we uh, then return the amount of money we can borrow to the requester, because usually it's a little bit different than the originated one. We can just simply refuse it and we're giving, of course, the reason why the request is being refused. Or the third thing, we can suspend it. We say, okay, there are some additional requirements, there is a list of you should met, and there is a deadline you should uh, met these requirements and up to. Okay, we have three different outcomes, and it means it's a very good candidate for the enum, because we have three different mutually exclusive states. Okay, so how will we model this loan engine in code in the first version? So the first option would be just use the enum and rule all the responses all. Okay, let's start from the request, because the request is a very simple class. It's just modeled with the two fields, amount and the period. We will spend not, not much time inside it. Just an immutable class, which will pass to the evaluator. Okay, that's fine. Now. The second class, the main class of the application, which is running the full logic. As you can see, we are preparing the evaluator, the request, and we got the response. And you, uh, now, as you can see, as the response has a concrete type, an enum type, exactly imported here, we can see if there's three, up, there's three possible states, approval, refusal, and suspension, we can uh, uh, run separate business logic for the, each of these three cases. As you can see, this uh, switch is the first uh, feature of modern Java that I would like to present you, because you know you do not see any colons here, any break uh, instructions and keywords. It's just the pure modern Java switch with the arrow labels. Very nice, because every label is just, be, if you if you finish execution of each of the branches, you do not need to write the break, uh, the break close, the break keyword, it's just, being, it's just finishing its work and its life cycle. Okay, now fine, good. The, so the main class looks relatively well. Let's also look at this evaluator class. It's also relatively simple. As you can see, there are few business rules. Hard coded inside it, of course, in the real system that would be some much more sophisticated. But for our sake of our simplicity, that's fine. We can rem 
leave it less as it is. But as you can see, here is the first sign of code smell because we are using some static methods of response class to build the response object. And this should be a first warning sign that something is not really good in this code and we can feel the smell I can uh, just previously talk about. And this, uh, this, and you will be right, because usually in such systems, when almost all components are relatively clean, there is always a one place in the code when we are just throwing out all the garbage which does not fit in our mm, architecture. And as you can expect, this place is the response class. Because it starts very innocently, because we just, it's just the enum type put it inside it, and we know what's the type of the response it is. And then suddenly we see, hmm, there are all possible fields and attributes of the all response types. Hmm, doesn't look good. It's not even the, the code smell, it's just the odor that we can see here. But to be honest, probably almost all of you has already done something like that when, we, when you were a junior developer. That's fine, that's normal, don't, don't worry about it. I also made a lot of such stu stupid things, so okay. So let's also see what happens further inside this class because these static methods are not being put by accident because if we have few different fields which are completely not used for any of the cases, we need to at least provide that the created instances of this class are more or less consistent. So sorry, I don't look at that. So we need to only allow to create this instance by the static methods to uh, populate only the fields that are needed. Okay. Definitely, it seems that it isn't good. We, this, the situations when the response class holds the multiple responsibilities, it's not a good, so it means that we need to reorganize it and introduce hierarchy of these classes. The response should be divided into some subclasses which uh, each of the subclasses carries the responsibility for one given case, refusal, approval, and so on. So, Let's see how does it look like. As our response does not really need to carry any logic now, it can be just transformed to the interface. It does not even need to be to an abstract class, that's okay. And we also can see that the subclasses, for example, like approval, can be just a records, because in modern Java, starting from up to 16 and higher, we can model immutable classes like the records, and exactly our approval class is a good example candidate for that because it's being instantiated with one value inside. We also need to somehow get this value out when we are uh, uh, running in, this, in my application. So do not lose Lombok here, value definitely, just use pure Java, it would be fine. Java 16 offers you that. Okay, for the sake of brevity, I omitted the rest of the classes because they will look exactly the same. And let's go to the next evaluator. Evaluator did not change a lot. The only thing is that with using records, uh, you see that uh, we are not using getters from the request class because I also uh, transformed the request class to a record because records in Java do not comply to the Java Bean specification, they do not have the getters like that. They have just uh, methods exactly named like the properties with the, and uh, without the get prefix. The rest of the class is almost the same, except the fact that we are just creating the new instances of the refusal, suspension, and approval classes. A little bit better. Hmm. Up to one moment. Now we have a problem because we decided to get rid of the, of the enum because it didn't get anything. And now in the main class of the application, we see that we need to somehow check what kind of response we got. And the only way to use it with the good old Java way is to use this ugly instance of with immediate cast after, after, afterwards. Uh, I omitted uh, the third case, but probably these this two for approval and refusal are exactly very straightforward and, uh, and clear what I'm talking about. So still does not look good. We separated the logic into different subclasses, but the logic regarding uh, cho choosing which of response we have looks very ugly. So 
it means that we definitely need another element of the puzzle. And the, another element of the puzzle is pattern matching. And this leads the third uh, thing I would talk about. And then is a little bit sad disclaimer, because pattern matching in Java is a preview feature, unfortunately. You cannot use it directly if you do not turn it on for the given version of Java. Of course, turning it on is not a problem. It's just pretty straightforward, as, we, as I will show you at the next slide. However, just please be aware of that, that if you want to compile the code provided here, you need to, to add an, uh, a few lines in the Maven pomxml. In Gradle, as far as I know, it's just much more pretty straightforward. It's just one line uh, in comparison to that. Fortunately, as far as I heard, in Java 2021, 20, which is the LTS, this would be finally not the, the permanent feature, so all this disclaimer does not apply. No more. OK. And with that being said, we can change the loan application to something like that. Now it looks definitely better, because we, not are, we can not only switch on the value of the response, but we can use this pattern matching, which allows you to check, oh, with the response is of the class of approval, go that branch, use that way. And also, if this is the instance of approval, you do not need to cast it directly, because we already know it. So just use it in the branch, exactly as we see here. There is no, no, no direct casting needed anymore. So looks relatively well, but there is one weak point here still. You see this default uh, label in the switch. Why? Because Java compiler, unfortunately, cannot guarantee that these three subclasses are the only ones that can implement the response interface. And with, with using pattern matching in the modern version of switch, there is a requirement to cover all possible branches in the switch. So com the compiler does not allow you to compile this code until you provide them with the default clause, which means, OK, if this response does not fit to any of these three classes, just throw this illegal state exception, which of course should never happen. However, as you can, as you already know, there are a lot of cases in our <laughs> developers' life when we got to something like that should never happen and throw exception. Okay, fine. So what can we do to solve this probably last problem? Okay, and now this is the last piece. There are still classes because starting from exactly as far as I know all probably all uh, either in Java 16, there has been added a possibility to seal the hierarchy of class. We can directly say, OK, this class can be only subclassed by the closed set of class. It also applies to interfaces. We do not, we can, for example, we can forbid uh, to uh, implement this given interface response by the different classes than these three given here. And to do that, we seal the hierarchy, and we just, we just read, write that the response interface should be sealed, as you can see as it is an additional uh, label before, be after the public one. And then in the permits clause, this is the last one after implements and extends, we directly enumerate, nomen omen, which of the classes can, be, can implement our response interface. And now, with all that being said, let's see how does look finally our class. Let's compare the, our solution from the, which we started from the beginning with the final one, because now, as you can see, there is no default clause. So we have more or less exactly the same. There are three, three possible uh, switch uh, branches. We can go inside it, but in this case, we get rid of the one of the code smells that it's that uh, now after our three classes that implements the response interface are completely separating our uh, their concerns so we do, we do not have the uh, the smell of sharing some behaviors in one response class so definitely it looks better also the another thing i would like to present you is the fact that with this hierarchy and these sealed classes 
Also, the tests we can write for the example evaluator implementation, it's more or less the same. Let's see here. In the, preview, in the original version, we are just uh, asserting that the response type is uh, the refusal, and we can also give another assert regarding this response. In case of this hierarchy of Sciarit class, it's even a little bit more concise because we just can say, okay, let's check whether this response is, is the type of refusal, and then we can make assertion there because assertJ already immediately calls, uh, makes the indirect uh, cast to the response, as you can see here. Okay, and this is more or less everything I wanted to present you. If you want to try this code at home because I presented it in a GitHub, you can clone it. There are a few steps inside. Uh, you can just try going one by one. Let's and see how does it behaves. Uh, so I will leave it for a few seconds if someone is interested in copying this QR code. And then I encourage you to ask me questions regarding this talk. Uh, just for the recall, go to the Slido, hashtag Geekon, and room number 10. Thank you very much. And let's go to the wall. Leave check whether there are any, any questions. Okay. Um, yes, uh, okay. The first question, as I can see, would it be easier to, with the response to interface having method print to be implemented in each response type? That's true. You're completely right. If you are just only printing the response, that's okay. Uh, probably using this uh, virtual method uh, this, uh, with the polymorphins would be better. However, let's assume that uh, with this response, we need to perform completely different action. And in such case, the print method wouldn't fit the bill. So uh, it's probably it's more common case that for the, for example, for a suspension, we also need to send some email to the customer. With the refusal, we do nothing. So uh, OK, but, with the, but you're, you're right. If, the, if just is only print, probably the print method in the abstract class of response would be better. That's, that's OK. Why not the construction patterns in final solution? Yeah, you're right. Definitely, I should prepare it uh, with the more, more modern Java. I would uh, somehow correct myself in the next version of the talk. Definitely, that's it's fine. But in such of the construction, maybe there's also the possibility that I, the time will just run out because it's another thing. But OK, that's fine also. Thank you for the good suggestion. Any other questions? OK, I do not see anyone. So thank you very much. Have a good night, good evening, and good after party tomorrow, today evening in the Hever. Thank you.